back on Hawk Talk, and we're joined by Coach Grappi. Coach, it's been a while since we talked to you. Uh, played a few conference games, a few non-conference trips. Just, just give us a recap of where the girls are at right now um, and what we got ahead of us. Well, I think we're on a six-game win streak. Uh, we were ten and four, and now we're sixteen and four. So I think it's six straight we won. Um, four and zero in the conference. And 16 and 4 overall, so you know, so far so good. Uh, there's been a disappointment too. I think the biggest disappointment when I look back in the season is the Kaiser University at, in Florida. I really still, you know, I complain about that one, but you know, other than that, uh, I have no complaints. Uh, you know, the seasons went great. Uh, we're ranked 19th in the country, so boy, I sure can't complain how it's gone so far. Talk about uh, that Mayville State game on the road mm -hmm. last week. Um, the team really was in a hole. Couldn't couldn't get shots to fall, but incredibly dug themselves out of a, I believe five point deficit it got to with, with under a minute left. Yeah, with just a few seconds left. Um, you know, we we practiced the night before, and I didn't want to say anything to the ladies, but they sure complained about the ball was not going yet. And they said, Coach, these rims are so tight, and and so we did not shoot well the night before. But you know, like I said, you don't want to talk about that. But. Again, same thing happened to us, 22% the first half, and we were getting great looks. I mean, these were layups, but the ladies just persevered, and Mayville is a tough place to play. It's really tough, and uh, to just escape, and I think we pulled a little Houdini there that we escaped with a win, and uh, anytime you can win on the road in the conference is just a huge plus, and then you got to win at home. You, you can't afford a loss at home, but anytime you can pull one out on the road is just, just huge, and that game... Uh, it was, you know, and I think when we look back uh, at the season, we're going to say that that was one of the big key wins for us in conference play. Now, obviously, the the matchup the North Stars kind of been waiting for, uh, with Dickinson State going to Jamestown, both teams in the top twenty. Mm -hmm. um, just just break that one down for us. Well, I've been watching a lot of tape on Jamestown, and boy, do they look good. They've been destroying everyone. Um, just on Sunday, they beat, They had a 33-point lead against Mayville at the end of three quarters. The game before that I watched, uh, they took it to Valley City. I think Valley City is very good. And yet they took it to Valley City. They had a 25-point lead, so they're undefeated at home. And uh, they're, they're very deserving of the 10th-ranked the team in the nation. Uh, their only losses are like to number one Morningside, number four at Briarcliff, and I've watched those games as well. And, Jamestown's just tough. They, they don't have weaknesses. They're athletic. They get up and down the court more so than we even do. So uh, we'll have our hands full. And irregardless of the outcome, we got to turn around right away Saturday and defend our home turf against Valley City. You said it well there. Um, we touched on the rankings a little bit. We've been a mainstay in the rankings so far. Um, talk about what that means for, for the program. Well, we really want to stay in the top 20 as far as rankings because... At the end of the season, you know, the conference winner, they go on automatically to the national tournament. And that's been our goal all along is this team, we, we've talked about it all year, really wants to make the national tournament and have a great experience with that. So we feel that if we happen not to win the conference, that we still need that top 20 ranking that will get us an at-large bid. So, so that's our goal is to stay as a top 20 ranked team. Uh, just in case we, we want to win the conference, but just in case we don't, we still want to get into that national tournament. All right, big big one tonight with Jamestown, but uh, good opportunity to see a good game Saturday with Valley coming here. So. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you, Valley is so good. They play great defense. Uh, they went out to Rocky. You know, we split with Rocky and Western. They swept uh, against Rocky on their home floor, and they beat a good Montana Western team. Um, Valley City is really good, so I hope the people come out Saturday because uh, that's going to be a dog fight. That's going to be a very even. I, I think Valley and us match up real even, so what a great game that should be. All righty. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. We're back on Hawk Talk. Coach, a few, uh, few road trips under your belt, kind yep. of getting the swing of things. Uh, just take us through some of the early season competition. All right, well, two weeks ago we actually opened up at uh, Spearfish, uh, South Dakota, with uh, Black Hills State hosting their first meet. And uh, went really well, you know, obviously first time of being part of the Dickens State program and just kind of just excited to see what we uh, were able to do and what can come out from it. And we actually had a very productive first meet. Um, Wendy Lewenberger, she uh, qualified for the shot put for nationals, which was... An awesome, you know, awesome thing there. She uh, 
all-time personal best in indoor too. So I mean, it, definitely for a first meet out, that was definitely exciting to see there. Um, had a lot of kids come up and just compete, and we had some pretty good performances that first meet. Um, this past weekend, we actually had a team split a little bit. Um, we had our multi kids go up to Mankato, Minnesota, for a big multi meet that they host up at the university, uh, the university up in town there. Um, and, uh, so I had Tommy Cease, I had um, freshman uh, Bo Ackerman, and also all of our other athletes, uh, Jalen Hendrickson. He, uh, all three of them went up to go compete in that. And for Bo and uh, Jalen, that was their first time competing in a, the mul or the heptathlon, which is seven events within a 24-hour span. And they. Uh, they all did well. Um, I mean, they all they all competed well, and um, at the end of the day, uh, there was this year. I know Tommy had all time best in the pole vault, all time best in the high jump, all time best in the thousand during the multi. So he had a very productive day there. And then um, even Jalen, for never ever pole vaulting in competition before, he went in and beat a few kids and actually had a pretty impressive day. Bo Ackerman himself also had a personal best in the uh, pole vault too, so overall it was a good experience for those kids. And then uh, the other rest of the group went back to Spearfish um, for the, the second meet that Black Hill State was hosting and had a lot of personal bests come out of that. And then obviously um, we had um, Jose qualify in the nat for nationals in the 60 hurdles and um, we had some performances that are definitely placing higher or pl placing pretty high in our conference. And so for just being two weeks in, uh, it's I think we're sitting in a very good spot. I think our team's starting to shape out well, and um, you know, can't really argue. Sure. Now, is most of the competition you're facing is that you know you talked about going to Black Hills a couple different times. Are those teams within our conference, or is it more uh, different levels of competition? There? It's for the most part, it's been mostly different comp levels of competition. Um, really, we haven't seen the co most of our conference yet, um, but. Uh, you know, for example, over at Moorhead, they had, that Waldorf College had a multi-kid in there, and um, so we got to see a little bit of, a little bit of that, but this weekend will be kind of a big weekend for us. Uh, we're heading over to uh, Concordia College um, over in uh, Moorhead, Minnesota, and uh, there we'll see, you know, Jamestown, we'll see uh, Valley City, so we'll see, we'll see a handful of our conference teams there, um, so it could be a nice little head-on-head -head competition for us, and but, you know, when we go to some of these meets, I mean, we go and we compete against a lot of D2s, other NAIAs, some D3s, and then, I mean, every once in a while there would be some D1 athletes, too, just depending on which meet you go to. Sure. So, it's nice because for us, you know, we can go to just about any kind of meet we want to go to and go for the, you know, the kind of competition we want to go against, and so it works, works pretty well for us because, obviously, you know, you want to make sure you're competing against some some of the best programs to definitely improve yourself. And so, but no, this next weekend will definitely be kind of a head up, head on a week for us, and hopefully we uh, do some good there. Now that uh, you've had a few weeks in the saddle as the head coach, are there any more gray hairs coming? Is any, anything catching you by surprise that uh, uh, you haven't anticipated? Uh, no, not really. Just uh, you know, there's a few bumps and bruises here and there, which you know, you always gotta. Plan it for those and all that, but um, no, I mean, gray hair wise, I don't have any showing yet. But you know, you know, as long as we keep doing what we, we're doing, and I mean, I appreciate the kids that make sure we take care of everything academically. You know, make sure we're also taking care of ourselves outside of practice. On you know, taking you know, getting treatment and all that stuff. But no, so far things have been going smooth. Just got to make sure I, just, I keep one foot in front of the other and make sure I. Uh, Everything keeps working the way it's been working. All right, well, it sounds like we're off to a great start to the year. Uh, good luck this weekend and into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're back on Hawk Talk. We're joined by one of our track and field athletes. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Jose Choro. Um, I'm a hurdler here at Dickinson State University, and uh, it's my junior year. All right, Jose, you want to take us through kind of your path to Dickinson and how you ended up running track here? Um, oh, it was kind of weird. Like, no, I never planned on coming to North Dakota at all. Like, yeah, I was looking to the U.S. and stuff, but because I was going to take a year off after high school. And I qualified to World Junior Championships in my senior year. 
And after that, I received an email from Coach Stanton, and he's like, hey, we're interested in you, like, would you like to come and stuff? And then I looked at the team, and I saw, whoa, Olympic champions and you know, world athletes. Yeah, I want to go there, for sure, and that's, that's how I got here. All right, take us to uh, recent success, and then we'll get into some uh, old accomplishments you've had. So how does this season started off for you? Oh, this season started great, better than expected. You know, like last year, I every race I was closer and closer to qualifying into indoor uh, nationals, but I never did. And this first meet, I straight qualified my B standard, so you know, it was great that first meet I had. Now, uh, last year you were able to, you said you weren't able to qualify indoors, but outdoors, um, you as well as the team had a lot of success. Uh, what does that, does that carry over to this year? Yeah, I kind of like, you know, in outdoor, I was like, okay, I got to work now to make it indoor and outdoor for next year. Like, I don't know, it kind of pumped me up being there with like all the good athletes from all around the nation yeah. and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I got to do it again. Now this off season, um, coaching change at DSU. Talk a little bit about how the programs uh, changed hands and what that's meant for you. Um, you know, we had a coach Schillinger who was great with us and stuff, but now Coach Creel here came and stuff, and he's been like 110 percent with us. It's, it's not 100 percent; it's 110 percent with us, and it's very supportive. Uh, we got a gear <laughs> that's something new for the team like we never have gear and stuff and I don't know it makes us feel like part of a team now like not like before where it was just track and I don't know we didn't look like a team because we all had different you know stuff wearing and I don't know, it's I feel like it's a lot better now now uh, how has the adjustment been to from where you're from to North Dakota, you talked about you came here, uh, you saw the Olympians, you saw all of that, but now that you're here, junior year, talk about what your experience has been like here. Oh man, at first it was, it was big, you know, like, cold for me was 60 degrees, uh, and I came here in January, like, on the middle of a snowstorm and stuff, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I did here, <laughs> and um, I've never been, like, to an indoor facility, never had intentions of like you know have practice in treadmills and stuff, mm -hmm. but over the years like you know those treadmills had like improving my speed and stuff like my technique and like it's better now than it used to be so it definitely worked out and I'm happy with it. What are your goals going forward this year? Obviously, I already got that B standard indoors. Take us through some of your indoor and outdoor goals. Well, indoor well. definitely I need to like you know improve my time. Um, I know the 60 hurdle is not really my event, so if I could make it to the semifinals, that would be awesome. Outdoor, definitely, I want to repeat that All American and you know possibly a national championship if I can. And uh, one of my biggest goals this year is I uh, managed to qualify to the Olympics for my national team. You had a little bit of success this summer um, in international competition. Take take us through that. Uh, yeah, back in June uh, there were the Central American Championships and um, you know the team just called me, they were like, um, you know we need a hurdler because we don't really have one here, uh, you want to compete for us again and stuff, I'm like sure I'll do it and um, I was kind of hurt last season and coming into the race I was like oh this is going to be hard and uh, I ended up taking fourth place in the 110 hurdles. Uh, and winning the 400 hurdles, which was a big shock for me. I was like, I was not expecting to win that event at the Central American Championships, but it worked out perfectly. Alrighty. Well, good luck to rest away in North Dakota as well Thank as you. across the globe. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.